Thank you, Senator Harris. Dr. Jocelyn, today um, General Peabody has testified that the Corps staff were concerned that the Bright Line geographic tests in the WOTUS rule could include water that should not be regulated and could exclude water that should be regulated. So I want to focus on whether the WOTUS rule would actually exclude any water. You note in your testimony that the EPA found, quote, the vast majority of the nation's water features were located within 4,000 feet of a covered tributary, traditional navigable water, interstate water, or territorial sea. That finding is supported by the analysis performed by Geosyntec for the American Farm Bureau Federation in a sampling of states. Uh, specifically, Geosyntec, Syntec analysis shows that 100% of the land area of Virginia is located within 4,000 feet of something that meets the WOTUS rule definition of tributary. The same is true for 99.7% of Missouri, 99% of Montana, 99% of Pennsylvania, as Senator Ernst said, 97% of Iowa, 95% of Oklahoma, 95% of California, and 92% of Wisconsin. You are from California, so I'd like to use that as an example. Based on the definition of significant nexus, which we've tossed around here today, but based on that definition in the WOTUS rule and assuming that geosyntec analysis is correct, would you agree that any water located in 95% of the land in California could be regulated under that rule? Uh, yes, Senator, thank you. Uh, we also did an analysis uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we found that all the land in the San Francisco Bay Area would be covered under that 4,000-foot uh, standard, and, except for the core urban areas of San Francisco, Oakland, and San Jose. So uh, it's quite true, and the significant nexus test itself is, has a very th low threshold in terms of uh, what would be required to be, have a significant nexus, so most of those areas would be regulated. Could I ask my colleague just yield for one moment? I, I'm not going to be able to ask questions because of the time restrictions of the vote on one. I've just asked consent that the American River statement be made part of the record, and I'll ask my questions for the record. Okay, without objection. What about states that are not included in that analysis? Nebraska wasn't included. Can you conclude that over 90% of the state would be regulated under that final WOTUS rule? Uh, in fact, in the uh, WOTUS rule, in the preamble, they talk about the fact that the 4,000-foot uh, limit was meant to include most all of the wetlands in the state, uh, in any state. And Mr. Saitlin, do you believe that the Clean Water Act regulates all water in a state? Uh, that, that is not within the coverage of the act. The act uh, applies to navigable waters, and under Justice Kennedy's approach, uh, waters that have a significant nexus to those navigable waters. Dr. Jocelyn, in November 2015, four months after the final rule was published, EPA added a review of 199 jurisdictional determinations to the WOTUS rule docket. And in this review, EPA found that only two positive jurisdictional determinations would change to negative, affecting approximately one acre of wetlands. EPA used this analysis to show that the rule would not cut off jurisdiction. However, the EPA's analysis also sh shows how the rule expands federal control over land. And of the 199 jurisdictional determinations EPA evaluated, 57 were negative. In 47 of those 57 negative jurisdictional determinations, the Corps concluded that federal jurisdiction did not exist because there was no surface connection to navigable water. So based on the definition of significant nexus under the WOTUS rule, the new one, do you agree that most of the 47 negative jurisdictional determinations evaluated by the EPA could become positive jurisdictional determinations under the final rule? Yes, Senator, I, I did look at that study, and um, you know the WOTUS rule also includes uh, shallow subsurface groundwater connections as a potential. So that could make some of those features that were had 
isolated surface water to be connected. Secondly, the WOTUS rule expands the definitions of tributaries. So there could be far more tributaries mapped in proximity to these features, and that could also expand the jurisdiction for those areas. Thank you. And Mr. Saitlin, the Department of Justice used the November 2015 document to defend the rule in the brief that they filed on January 13th of this year. Would the EPA's post hoc, post hoc rationalization of their 4,000 foot threshold be credible to a court? What's your opinion on that? Uh, it would not be uh, legally permissible to be studied in court under the, uh, the Supreme Court's Chenery case. Uh, a rule can only be upheld uh, on the basis of, a re of the record that was before the agency when it issued the final rule. Okay, thank you very much.